Previously, we continued working on sheathing the first floor of our A-frame addition. With all floor walls in place and all structural posts built and secured, we are finally ready to attempt lifting the 450 pound steel beams into place. And once we get up in the air, we want to slide it back and push it forward if we can. Dangerous. It's the most dangerous job we've tackled so far, but the necessary next step in order to move on to building the second floor. One, two, three, push. Push. So today we're going to finish what we started. I have three windows to cut out. You all can see I have my safety gear on from top to bottom. I got some for my lungs, some for my eyes, and some for my wig up top. So we're good. It's not a wig, it's a toupee, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> It's not too bad. <laughs> so, I lost all my train of thought now. I can't breathe, I can't see, and my head feels funny. You know what I mean? <laughs> At least you're safe. <laughs> I look dangerous. Back to train professional. <laughs> Thank you. Look, she's bellowing for us. Lily! And she's on her way over. She just hears your power tools and knows you're out here working. Uh huh. Lily! You're okay! Nice catch! It looks so good. Yeah. It was the right call with three windows there. A neighbor of ours is headed over tonight to purchase one of our weaned ram lambs and the entire flock of sheep is back here all the way at the far end of the pasture and we need to push everybody down into the lower bays underneath the barn get them all put in there and then we can start sorting all of the sheep out so ellie and i have come prepared with some pringles and some crackers of some sort both things that Leon enjoys to snack on. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to see if we can use this to lead Leon down. And if we can lead Leon down, we can lead the whole crew down. All right. So I need you guys to make sure that the hay side of the stalls is closed. Yes. The mm -hmm. open bay has the gate completely open. Yes. And then there's a gate at the very end. Push it all the way to the edge and block the roundabout that goes around the barn. Okay. Right. She's a barn boss. She's in charge. <laughs> I'm gonna get their attention, okay? But you're gonna need to keep an eye out and stay at far enough of a distance to where if it gets dangerous with the rams that you have an escape route. Okay, I already know my way out. Okay. <laughs> this isn't your first day on the job, is it? No. <laughs> Good? Yep. Yeah, we're good. Hey, Carter, grab that side right here. Pull back a little bit so you can clean it. Put it on the push-up. Lily! Leon! There you go. Hop in. Okay. There he is right there, little guy. Yep. Look on the back. Right there. See him little chest bars on him? Nice, nice knees on that too. Come on, Leon, hop! All right, you can see him starting to go. They're heading all the way around. There's the barn. We need to get them to the front of that. I'm still on our gas. I can feel it. It's just walking down. So it's getting close. That's a little guy right there. Not going according to plan, which is the plan. <laughs> That's it, five gas. Ah, bump, come on, here's bump. There you go, bump. Come on, ah, let's go. Get him, Carter, get him. Got him. Is he okay? He's fine, look at him. I think Carter's more worn out than him. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I was low on gas. And I came right here, car jumped up, and uh, the thing turned off on me right when we got him barricaded, and Carter got him. He's good. <laughs> Aaron, I ran out of gas. Then Carter jumped on top of him. What lock, exactly? Good, He's fine. Yeah. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Buddy, you're going to a good home. You're gonna be a daddy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, can y'all carry him? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. But like you said, he's going to a good home. Where he's going, he has five ladies waiting for him. Yes. Yeah. No other. There's no other uh, rams. Rams there whatsoever. So yeah. he's gonna. He's gonna have his own pack. He's yeah. gonna have some babies. He's not going for butcher. He's gonna be a family man. Yes. Yeah. And he's uh, on pasture. I think yes. that they rotationally graze using yes. electric fencing. So, good boy. you got a good spot, buddy. It's gonna be okay. All right, we'll get you some water while you wait yeah. for your ride. <laughs> that one out, hey, go for it. So we've got another storm rolling in. There's thunder everywhere. That's why I really wanted to be able to put them underneath the barn. They got enough gas to get it started at least. So they're trying to make it down there. Otherwise, we'll just carry him the rest of the way. But I just wanna be sure that us and the neighbors aren't out in the thunder and lightning while we're trying to transfer him from the holding pen into their cage. It worked out. <laughs> We're good. We'll just sneak in. Yeah, That's no, good. No, no, no. Keep it shut. Put your weight against her. On her face. Her oh, I got <laughs> And that's it. He is off to greener pastures yes. with good neighbors. Yep. And, and I was wrong. I misspoke. I thought it was four or five girls. It's actually 11. <laughs> so he's in luck. He is in luck. <laughs> <laughs> he's beautiful. And his daddy is beautiful too. He is gorgeous. Yes. We're so excited. Thank you guys. Yeah. No, he does not. There's a little brown This video is sponsored by Narwhal. I have a husband, three kids, dogs, and cats, and that, guys, is exactly why I also have the Narwhal Frio. It is hands down the best robot mop, also equipped with powerful vacuuming. I actually started using Narwhal's robot mop and vacuum about two years ago to help me stay on top of the chores around the house, and it was an instant game changer. It's literally like having another human in the house that helps me stay on top of things, and Lord knows I need that. The Narwhal Frio thinks and cleans for you thoroughly. From sensing dirt, hard scrubbing floors, washing mops, and even changing water all by itself. That means that I can sit back and relax while Frio ensures that every inch of our home is clean and fresh. Constant pressure produces a powerful grip, scrubbing and wiping out stains from coffee to dried on spills. AI algorithms identify areas with stubborn stains and automatically remop the area and automatically wash the mop until the floor is clean. Plus with the auto wash exchange, I don't need to lug around and dump dirty water bins. It's as easy is a washing machine but for our floors. It works by connecting directly to the water pipeline. Electromagnetic and air valves ensure stable water flow and avoid leakage and the self-test system assists in proper usage. So the Frio always has fresh water to keep germs away and always has a safe water supply for mopping the whole house. It's the vacuum and mop combo that just makes life easier. It's quiet, it works on wood floors, tile floors, carpet, it vacuums and it mops. The microfiber triangular mops provide a thorough clean without me needing to lift a finger and one app gives me total control. If you're interested in checking out the Narwhal Frio, click our link in the description box below or search Narwhal Frio on Google or Amazon. Now let's get back to the build.
So all the steel beams for the second floor and the safe room are here. They're not here on site. The trailer is too big to get it up past and up to the property. So I need to take the skid steer. Aaron needs to drive the truck and the trailer down the road. We got to offload their truck and put everything onto our truck. And we all hope it goes to plan. We'll see. I have a strap, should be strong enough, has been used a long time, it should work. And I'm an expert at driving that trailer. <laughs> See, back it up real quick. <laughs> The plan is to get the skid steer, we're gonna come around this backside, pick, come around, drop it on our trailer, back and forth. Those things are longer than the trailer. I think the trailer is a 16 foot trailer and I got a 20 foot piece of steel and a bunch of 12 foot 14 steel. You can keep going, you're not to the wood yet. We're all loaded up, everything went fairly well. We used that choker, made things a lot easier because the issue is with the forks and dropping it down over the top of that wheel wheel, the choker came in handy, but it set it down in place. We're locked in, but now taking this trailer with this steel on top up that mountain and hopefully it doesn't fall off the side. So we gotta strap it down tight. Aaron's driving, I'm gonna be, I guess what, supervising from the back from the, with the skid steer. So if I, if I start hawking, you can know it fell off. But I'm sure you'll, you'll feel it and hear it also. <laughs> I just want you guys to know that I have no business at all driving a trailer with steel beams anywhere. No business. So we made it back to the house safely with all of the beams and everybody and all vehicles and trailers intact. We got the duck jack put up on the subfloor. See? Now this, guy, this guy here is going to lift our 500 pound steel beam up. He's a real MVP. He's a real deal. Deal. Like deal. The next step is going to be actually unloading all of the beams off of the trailer and getting them moved over to the house site. This is a completely new project for both of us. Neither of us have ever worked with steel beams before and they're extremely heavy and we need to get them all the way up to the second level of the house. So I am extremely nervous about this project. I just don't want either of us to end up hurt. And it just makes me nervous because there's no guarantee.
Uh, we're good. Now the hard part is getting these into the house. That's the hard part. <laughs> Look at our house plans. You see, we have a 16 foot six steel beam right here. We have a 19 foot one and three quarter steel beam going right here. So, in total, we have 11 steel beams. Aside from these two here, we have nine more steel beams coming across the safe room with pan decking on top and concrete on top of that. We'll start with the 19 footer first, and once that's done, we'll complete the 16 footer. Then, once the safe room walls are up and built, we'll install those nine beams last. So we're close enough. The big one's 480 pounds, but we're able to hopefully teeter it a little bit and push it up on there ourselves by Aaron pulling back, me pulling back and picking it up, pushing it on. Once we get that up there, smooth sailing. All right? Taking this last part. Not a big deal. Ready? One, two, three, go. Oh my goodness! Can you push it though? No, one, one, two, three, push. Okay. One, two, three, go. Okay. Got the big mom up there. Good. <laughs> I didn't engage the glutes. I didn't engage the glutes, huh? Yeah. I know, glutes engage. Just push. <laughs> One, two, three, go. Ah, yeah, buddy. One, two, three, go. Ah. One, two, three, push. Ah. One. Two, three, go! Ah, two, three, go! <laughs> Looks like you need me after all, huh? I do need your help, you're right. <laughs> you ready? I just wanted to keep you humble, Josh. Uh, no. Let's go. One, two, three, go! One, two, three, go! Hard one's done first. Like I said, that's a cakewalk. You all saw when Aaron stopped pushing, right? I almost had it. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. So much lighter. So much lighter. It's actually shorter and uh, a lot lighter too. One, two, three, push. Yeah. One, two, three, push. One, two, three, push. Good. Do it. One, two, three, push. Yep. One, two, three, push. Perfect. That's it. Good job, Eddie. Love you. Top of steel is going to be six and a half inches below my line. Six and a half. So I cut roughly right here. Steel is going to slide in. It's on the top and attach, and the top of steel should be right here. So the floor joist will come directly on top. Better cut this portion off. Tomorrow's a big day, raising beams. Then we can finish the second floor. Yep. Time okay. to build up. Yep. So today is the big day. We're getting all set up and ready to go. One of us is qualified to do this and one of us is not. But I think we'll get through, hopefully. <laughs> so, the front of steel's gonna come roughly right here. We gotta pull back a little bit, jack it up, and give a little bit of soft push. And we'll sit on top of those two posts and uh, we'll drop it down. So the plan is that the duck jack is going to do all of the heavy lifting, like the real work for us. I think possibly the most difficult part of this is going to just be getting the beam onto the duck jack. The most dangerous part is once we get it up in the air and pushing it on top of the post. That's the most dangerous part. Yeah. But. I've said this before and I'm gonna say it again. This is one of those projects where I like hold my breath the entire time and I'm in my head thinking I just want this to be over. <laughs>
<laughs> That's what I'm gonna be thinking when we're trying to move that steel beam onto those posts. Like, please, just let this be over. Okay. Yeah. So we can use some PVC pipe? Uh, roll that bad boy over? Yeah. Yep. I have a four inch PVC pipe. We're gonna put it underneath the beam, sit on top, and roll it on over. We're just gonna take it one step at a time. Now I gotta slide a little bit, huh? We need this portion to get to, to this, and then we'll, we'll be in the safe zone. What do you mean the safe zone? Um, cause this thing's 460 pounds. So it's, but you gotta keep in mind now. It's, four, it's, four, it's 460 pounds, this is. So all we gotta pick up is 230 pounds and drag it over. So it's 115 each. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not a big deal. But it does bleed. One, two, three, go. Ready? Go. What we need to do is take that duck jack, slide it underneath the beam, center the duck jack with center of the beam, and uh, we put it under there, set it down, and we can wheel it on over. Three, two, one, go. It's a little wobbly right now. Once we get it up eight feet, it's gonna get a little more wobbly probably, and it can be very dangerous. So you gotta take it slow, put it up, inch it in, be very careful, because if it comes crashing down, it's an issue. All right? So don't try to catch it. Absolutely <laughs> not, just let it go. You know, we'll, just, we'll place the subfloor, we'll place the subfloor joists, not a big deal, you know, as long as we're going home with our fingers and toes. <laughs> Our lives is more like it. <laughs> Nobody's gonna be losing <laughs> fingers and toes. If We're that just... thing falls in your foot, yeah, you're losing a foot. <laughs> We're so far from a hospital that, like, you know, see, this is let's just do it and not think about it anymore because we're talking about all the bad things that could happen. Let's just put it up in the air and be done. Yeah, you know, go get pizza or something. Let's you know, do it. Live a normal life for once. <laughs> the steel beams on the duck jack are ready to go. I need to cut the post down a couple feet. The first post is going to be fairly easy to cut down. The second post, not so much. The wall is tied into it. Hindsight's 2020. I should have cut it down prior to building that wall, but you know, I'm a DIY guy, not a builder. So we're making do. We'll make it work. We're up there. I have that side on there about how far, do you know? The holes for the bolts are on there, so you're a couple inches on there. All right, if I hit a few more times, we'll go ahead and drop it down and we'll beat it over a little bit more and we'll go ahead and secure everything, lag it down while the duck jack holds up in the center. But Woo. we did it. And it's like, it's getting dark girl, <laughs> you know? Ain't Woo. nothing like putting a 500 pound beam up with a, with a 10 pound hammer <laughs> when it's dark, you know? <laughs> Uh, let's drop it down. We're down. Huge success. Yes. Now you can start the second 
second floor. Yep. <laughs> Wait, there's one more beam left. <laughs>